Hello everybody, it's Nim and welcome back to my channel. Today's Friday, Friday means Planet Zoo. And like I said in the video on Monday, we are back with an uploading schedule of two videos a week for now. Um, we're not going to do the third, just building it up very slowly. But today we are building in Planet Zoo. And we are making a jaguar habitat. Now this habitat is very far away from the other hab habitats. Like, you may not notice, and maybe you do, and then, you know, I'm just gonna repeat it again, but whatever. I built the Red Tail Zoo, like, um, the, ter the terraforming, I did that first. So first I made sure that the entire map looked nice, with trees and mountains and waterfalls and water and, you know, all the things that, you know, goes with that. And after that, I started deciding where I wanted to put everything, so where I wanted the entrance to be, where I wanted habitats to be. And the jaguar habitat is in the fully left bottom corner. It is quite far away. Um, I believe that in the cinematics at the end you will be able to see exactly how far away it is and in some shots in this video itself as well. So don't worry, there will be a lot of things in between the jaguar habitat and the closest thing to the jaguar habitat at the moment is the red panda habitat. And that's quite far away, but there will be stuff in there. The pathways will, um, without a doubt, change because they're very straight at the moment. And that's not something that I wanted for this zoo. I wanted to very natural, swirly streets, you know, the entire works. So we are doing that. Well, at the moment we're not doing that, like the very straight. We are going to change that. Now this jaguar habitat, um, I've doubted for a long time what I wanted to build, how I wanted to build it, and I decided to build this little, I don't know how to call it, like this little house where the keeper's hut is actually in, and like the keepers can access through there, so it will just be a little bit more sheltered, and then now I wanted to do an all natural rock uh, barrier and wall. Unfortunately, jackboards are ridiculously good at climbing, so that was not gonna happen. Basically just because of the fact that they keep climbing on the rocks and escaping. So in the end, unfortunately, I did have to use a real barrier, but you know, it is what it is. And it still looks fine. I mean, it's probably more realistic because jaguars are pretty dangerous animals. So you probably want them to have a real barrier. And here we are making this little, well, I mean not little, we are making a quite big viewing space. This viewing area will have multiple levels and it will oversee multiple areas so there will be a animal there i don't know which one yet if you have an idea let me know in the comments down below but for this video we are focusing on the actual jaguar now what i wanted to do here because it is quite unsafe to have like uh, no railing here because then you could just fall into the jaguar um, habitat and get eaten and we don't want that for our guest i mean i know i won't it would be funny perhaps but if you're thinking like, um, I wanted to be a pretty realistic zoo, it most definitely would not be funny and it would probably mean that the zoo had to be closed. So we are not doing that. We are keeping it mellow and we are making sure that there is actually a good safety, well, safety way or a safe way to do that. And by doing that, we are actually using these custom barriers and it kind of feels like you're in a cage, but that's the meaning of it. I mean, like, I, I truly believe like I, I intended that. And it may look a little bit weird now, but we are going to nicen it up with some uh, floral aspects. Plus the wall that I'm closing off now here completely uh, will reopen again. Because I wanted to have a monorail in the zoo and I want the monorail to go past the jaguar habitat. And so we needed the station here and, you know, we did. And I'm actually quite pleased what it is. Like we haven't built a station yet, but we are going to. And it's going to be like across from here, so on the other side. And I feel like that will perfect will work perfectly fine. I hope at least. I really hope, but you know what? Who, who, who cares in the end it is my zoo? And if it doesn't work, I'll just think of something to make it work. Because that's what we're good at. The Planet Zoo community is pretending stuff isn't that bad and just fixing it ourselves. I really feel like that's what the community is really good at. And that's like not a, that's not me bashing, that's me like being honest about the community because I really think that's quite a good quality. So there you see me just like slowly perfecting it. We are gonna cut away now because I did want to show you guys how I did it. So that's why I left this in. Normally I would have cut it out. But I, I 
don't really know if anyone has ever done something like this before. At least I haven't seen it, so I felt really original. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm totally gonna show this to you guys because I'm feeling really original with this idea. So just so you know, um, the bottom one, because we are doing a similar thing on the bottom platform, that won't be so... Um, at least I didn't think I put it in like that extravagance. That's a little bit shorter, I believe. Ah, yes, and here we are doing the same thing what we did at the night, uh, night house. The nocturnal house, I should say, I believe that's the English word for that. And we are actually making this little pathway, because again, there are no railings here, because I didn't want to use the uh, custom railings from the, from the game. I say custom, but like the pre-railings, I didn't want to use those, I wanted to use my own railings. So we are using them here. Or making them here. First we are going to go all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Like you see, and then once we were all the way down, because obviously I'm not going to um, put that in this video because it took so freaking long. Like I kid you not, just me actually placing all these pieces of wood. I think it took like almost an hour and a half, really insane, but whatever. And now we are doing the same thing what we did at the... Um, a tapir habitat and the night house just putting some flowers on top of it just to make it look a little bit more fun because otherwise it can feel really static and really um i don't know really how to explain it but it feels really like you're trapped really claustrophobic claustrophobic something like that and i didn't want that so obviously we are going to put flowers there and making sure that it looks happy and cheerful and actually really nice and I'm actually quite proud of the way that it looks. Now you will see me place not, not placing any flowers in the middle. That's because right there we are creating a skylight so in a few minutes I believe I'm, we are going to delete the actual beams there and we are going to put a big glass roof there just to make sure that if it's raining you can still stand dry here because it's not fun if it's raining and everything's dripping on you. And I feel like with these all these flowers here and these plants, that is probably something that is going to happen. Because, you know, the flower, the, the rain it will just go through the flowers and it's just dripping on you. I don't think that's going to be that comfortable. So hence the glass area. You see me removing all the shelves. Like, there were a lot of shelves stuffed together. I feel like this part here is really big on the piece counts of the entire zoo. Which, you know, is perhaps kind of tragic, but on the other hand, eh. And here we are making sure that the edges of the pathways look nice because you don't want those concrete. The entire zoo is like floral and everything, so you want to have some floral pieces there. And we are mixing it up. Like we are using uh, the same plants, but you have like three or four different shapes of plants in here. We are rotating them slightly ever so much. Uh, just to make sure that it looks nice. And now we are actually putting the real railing in there because you need to have that otherwise uh, children or people can still jump out of that and we don't want that. So we are doing that all the way around and that took quite some haggling because there are a lot of annoying corners in there. And I just didn't want to deal with that, like all these corners, man, so annoying. But we've dealt with it and we've conquered it. And it looks pretty fine. I mean, I have to say, I really like this. If this was in a zoo, I would totally walk like three times up and down just because it looks so pretty. Or perhaps um, the fear of spiders would lead me to not walk there because there's probably gonna fall a spider on my head. Yeah, that's probably more realistic. Or bees, because of all the flowers, there are probably going to be a lot of bees in there in the summer. So I wouldn't want to go in there. Because for some reason I always get attacked by bees, like every holiday they're after me and I don't know why. Because I, in holidays I don't wear perfume because I know that bees are attracted to that, so no thank you. I don't wear any colorful outfits because I, like they say, animals are attracted to that. I'm pretty sure bees and wasps are colorblind, but I'm not sure. So I just don't want any buzzing animals near me, so... That's why I don't, why I'm so pale because I usually don't go outside in the summer. But luckily, it's winter now, and in the winter I can go outside except when it's raining like today. I mean, it's raining so much. Like I really hope that you guys can't hear it, and otherwise, I'm sorry. It's nature. I can't help that. I mean, I really can't. And otherwise, I wouldn't want to because rain is actually really good for the nature, especially since all the um, well, you know, the, the dryness of last summer. 
nature really needs a lot of water, so it's fine. And here we are doing the top area. In the top area we're doing it kind of similar to the bottom area. We are going to use some different types of plants, just because I didn't want it to be exactly the same. Because, you know, that's boring and nothing in a zoo is exactly the same. At least I don't think so. To the zoos I've been aren't exactly the same everywhere, so you know, I thought it was really clever. And we are going to use like a lot of light and dark uh, colors together and some yellow, some red. And that's just, I mean, look, when you're underneath it, it looks really, really pretty and I'm quite happy with it. Now, here for the actual walkway, I didn't want to use only plants because that gets quite bored and I want you to be amazed. So for the top bit, we are going to use some glass panels and we are going to place them. We are going to make them wood color, obviously. And we're just going to place them, you know, down there. And after that, I was really done with that walkway. Like, it's not finished. It will be in a minute, but we're just going to make sure that we have some power and water because we do have some educational boards up there and they didn't have any power yet and they need to have power. So there needs to be a power station. So like placing them there, a little cottage feel. Felt actually really cute, really like it. And then we are back to the walkway again. You know, just making sure that it looks nice. And I found these plants, they are from the aquatic pack, I believe. They look really nice. Like, I never really looked at them like that, but they are actually really, really nice. And they look really well. The details in these little, well, patches of plants is quite amazing, quite exquisite. So I really quite enjoy it. And there you see me placing the glass barrier, like glass roof, just to make sure that you actually can look at it. And naturally, we needed to do the outside as well. I mean, that's just something that needs to be done. So a lot of rock work. And I, you know, you can just paint with the rock paint of the terrain paints, but never use only terrain paint. Use real rocks because in real life, rocks are, you know, they, they stick out. They have different shapes, different textures. It's not just all rock paints. And I have found that especially the tropical biome fits in really well. And I don't, that's probably to do, I think the terrain paint is a little bit different in each biome, but I'm not exactly sure, but I have a feeling that it might be, because it fits so perfectly, and otherwise it's really, really lucky. And here we are just filling in all the little, you know, pieces. You don't want to have something that's kind of look like there aren't any plants. Because especially in the beginning of the zoo, there is a lot of foliage, and it is really really high density of plants and I wanted to do that everywhere in the zoo. Now I have run with the issue that um, sometimes my screen will freeze and that's probably because there are so many objects in one place. Especially with plants because I tend to rotate um, the same plants four times on top of each other just to make sure that it looks like a really nice and heavy plant. And you know, perhaps I shouldn't do that, but otherwise it just looks pretty bland and boring. And I don't want to have a boring zoo, I want to have a zoo where you walk in and you're like, wow, I'm actually in the rainforest. This is crazy. I mean, I'm talking about the rainforest zoo. In the first beginnings I was so, so convinced that it was going to be an, uh, an Asia themed zoo. And I did not do that at all. It's because I love foliage so much. And back then, when I started the zoo, which is like, this is episode 8, 9, 10, 10 I think. So, around 10 weeks ago, I wasn't really into building in Planet Zoo. But then I started playing Planet Coast, and I was like, oh, you can actually build entire buildings here. I could probably do that in Planet Zoo as well, I never thought of that. So, ever since I started playing Planet Coaster, I have looked at Planet Zoo completely different and I can now see all the amazing things that you can actually do in Planet Zoo. So, I just, I didn't... If I had known that like 10 weeks ago, I probably would have done a heavy Asia-related uh, architectural zoo. But who knows, that could be the next zoo. Even though for the next zoo, I kind of want to go for a Middle Eastern zoo or a very medieval zoo. Or maybe a snow zoo. I'm not quite sure. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like, what kind of zoo would you like to see next? Not that this zoo is anywhere near finished. Because we have so much more to do. Like, so much more. Like, not even 
half of this map is filled. I believe we have filled one eighth of this map now, which is not a lot. Maybe with the jaguar habitat, one sixth, because it is quite a large habitat. And I, I'm afraid, like the thing I fear most is that there aren't enough animals in the game for me to actually complete the zoo with, and then I have to think of other creative things. But we will look at that when we get there. We're not there yet. It's fine, we can still manage. It's fine. Oh well, so here we are making a little uh, sleeping area for the uh, jaguar. And I wanted to do it very natural and with a glass um, like side, where, you know, one way glass so animals can't see you but you can see the animals. Just to make sure that they think they have privacy but you as a visitor that you can still see them. And I really think it was quite clever to do that near the fence, otherwise obviously uh, one sided glass wouldn't work. But also it pulls the guests together and it, you know, um, these animals sleep a lot. So you want your guests to be able to see them and what other way is it to do it like that? That's what I'm really into, I want to give the animals uh, a natural habitat and natural barriers and all that stuff but i do want them to be visible for the guests like not all the time because animals deserve privacy as well but if possible i want them to well, i want the guests to be able to see the actual animals and i feel like with the jaguar habitat i did quite well because you have this upside um viewing point and then you have some viewing points near the fence and then you have the sleeping area where you can actually look inside as well and I actually think that's really quite clever of me. I mean, even if I say so myself. Especially if I say so myself. Like, I feel uh, actually quite good. And I'm actually really quite proud. That sounded incredibly posh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so right now we are just finishing up the actual habitat. And we're making some lovely climbing barriers. You know, because animals need to have those as well. Especially jaguars. And now a lot of the trees, they can already climb in. So the palm trees are like a natural climbing area and like that's completely fine but I like to create my own as well same with all the enrichment items like pro tip honestly listen to me enrichment items please put them somewhere near the fence because the animals will use them and the guests will look at the animals so if you use the enrichment items near the fence, the guests will be able to see the animal and it will give you your zoo a good rating and they'll be happy and they'll say stuff like, whoa, I have never seen a jaguar this close. Oh, I could barely, I could almost touch it, you know, stuff like that. And they won't say, oh, is there even a jaguar in this habitat? I can't even see. Like I have with a pygmy hippo. The pygmy hippo is a perfect example of how not to do it. One thing, because I didn't realize the pygmy hippo uh, mainly lived underwater, I didn't realize that, and I gave it a very large habitat with a lot of water. If you haven't watched the pygmy habitat uh, build, it is in the playlist that will be linked at the end of this video and also linked down below. Anyways, like it is a lovely habitat for the pygmy hippo, I'm really, really happy with it. But the guests aren't able to see the um, actual animal that good. So I get a lot of negative ratings for the Pygmy Hippo, which I feel like is totally like um, not justified. Because in real life, you wouldn't see a hippo somewhere, and I know that you go to the zoo to see animals. But still, feelings got hurt when my guests were like, oh, well, there I can't even see if this is a Pygmy Hippo. And then I started bashing on my habitat. I really mean, I really can't stand that. I really can't. So ever since then, I've tried my best to make the habitat as fancy and as beautiful as, as I possibly could. And still sometimes guests are like, oh well, this looks just okay. And I'm like, excuse you. My habitat looks freaking amazing and you should be honored that you can actually look at it. Okay, maybe I'm ranting a bit too much. I'm probably going way over the point that I was actually trying to make. I've actually gone so far that I don't really remember the point that I was gonna make. I'm sorry. But also not really because um, you know it's in my it's in my culture to rant about things. I'm Dutch, if you didn't know that already. Like it's in our culture to complain. It's it belongs in our culture, and that's not like me saying that because I like to complain. Dutch people complain about everything, and we're happy to complain about everything. I mean, um, we complain about when it gets too sunny, and then when it starts to rain or like like the clouds for the sun, we complain about that. And I know that other people of other countries, they complain as well. 
but the Dutch are like we're master in complaining. Because if you haven't, if you've got any Dutch friends um, and you're not Dutch yourself, ask them. They can confirm this. And if you're Dutch yourself, well, you know what I'm talking about. We love complaining, and we're proud of it, and that's fine. I mean, that's we're very critical people, and that's completely fine. I mean, being critical is what got me really far in life, and you should always ask questions. Because, you know, thinking is very important. Anyway, okay, I'm not going into a complete complete rant about why thinking for yourself and being critical is important, because we simply don't have time for that. We could do that some other time, but not now. For now, we are coming to the end of this video. We have about, I think, half a minute or something left. And I will let you enjoy the cinematics after that. So before I go, I want to thank you guys for watching. And if you haven't already, make sure you like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And I know I say this every video, but it really helps the YouTube algorithm. YouTube works the way that if a lot of people like something and they press like, it shows the video to a lot more people. So I want to grow my channel. I'm going to need your help. So it's really just, it's not really a... a a big thing to do just press the thumbs up that's it you know hit the bell icon if you haven't already and that's it so that's all you need to do i don't think really that that's much and i want to thank you for doing that if you have already and if you haven't you still have a few seconds before the video ends anyways guys i wish you a very good afternoon morning wherever you are and enjoy the cinematics bye guys